Am I the a-hole for wanting to cancel the party that my husband is throwing for his best friend? I, 28 female, and my husband, 30 male, have been dating for 3 years and married for 2. Recently, we have bought a house together to start a family. It has a beautiful garden and is overall quite spacious. My husband, we'll call Paul, and his best friend Ethan have known each other since elementary school and are very close. Ethan hadn't had any relationships during the whole time that I have known him. Apparently, this is quite rough on him. So, my husband decided that he would host a party for him at our house and ask me to invite all my single girlfriends and they were to invite their single friends as well. To be honest, I really did not want to have a party in our home, especially with me being seven months pregnant. But I relented and said fine because I thought it could be fun to meet my friends and get my mind off things. We chose a date for the party and invited our friends and an estimated number of around 30 people, mostly women, would be attending. Even though I'm pregnant and cannot drink, I offered my husband that I could be making cocktails for the guests. As this is something that I think is fun and I like making mocktails for myself as well. He kind of looked at me weird and said, well, who else would be making them? Which threw me off a bit as this was his event and not mine. I took the moment to ask him if he had called a caterer or how he would be feeding the guests. To which he gave me a look and replied by saying, I thought you were going to cook. I was sure I wasn't hearing clearly, so I asked him again and got the same answer as before. I told him that there was absolutely no way I was going to feed 30 plus people and that he should either order food or make it himself. He told me that he was too busy with party planning and work and had no time and that I should just be making appetizers instead, as people would be mostly drinking anyways. I told him that I would not be doing that as my pregnancy has been hard on me, and that I didn't think I had it in me. He told me to just try and I said no, and told him that he should call catering before it was too late. Well, fast forward two weeks, and he has not called catering, and told me that I had to make the appetizers, as it was too late now anyway. It made me incredibly upset and I told him that I was going to be canceling the party because at this point, it was stressing me out too much. He called me selfish and told me to quit being such an a-hole and to just do something nice for his friend who is struggling. I do feel bad for lashing out on my husband and wonder if I exaggerated. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Info. Do all the women that you invited know what the true intentions of this party are? Because if you're just inviting your friends to be picked over like produce at a grocery store and they have no idea, I'd be pretty mad at you if I were one of your single friends. When my husband first brought this party up, the thought behind it did make me feel a bit icky. My emotions are all over the place at the moment, so I don't really trust myself. My friends all know that this is a party for singles. I've mentioned Ethan to my close girlfriends, but since they invited their friends to, I don't know how much went through to them. There will be other single guys there that my husband invited. So far, he told me some of the names of men who will be there, but mostly he just told me that if so-and-so has time, they will come. Some of my friends have also asked if they could bring their guy friends, to which I said yes, but I am unsure how many of those will actually be attending. Not the a-hole. This whole thing sounds weird. Cancel this party for sure. No 7-month pregnant woman should be getting stressed out over holding a 30-plus attendee party for a husband's friend just so he can get a girlfriend. Your husband should have scheduled catering if this was such a big deal to him. Not an a-hole. Your husband is being an a-hole. I mean, he even states that his job is the party planning. Usually, party planning includes food, drink, and entertainment. If you are doing the drinks and expected to do the food, then what exactly is his part in this? Cancel it. Or tell him to get the barbecue out and get grilling because you're making cocktails and socializing with your friends. I'm too busy planning. Bro hasn't done anything but invite people a month ago and ordered Opie to do the rest. Exactly. What the heck is he even doing? Party planning includes feeding people for the party you wanted. Even if his wife wasn't pregnant, his audacity's through the roof. Next story. Am I the a-hole for dedicating more time towards my bio children than my stepson? My wife, 40 female, and I, 38 male, have been married for 10 years and have three kids together, 11, 8, and 6. 
My wife also has a 19-year-old son from a previous relationship. My stepson and I have a pretty good relationship. His dad is and always has been present in his life, but my stepson currently lives with my wife and I. He dropped out of college after one semester due to mental health issues. He has struggled with anxiety and depression for three to four years now and was doing better before leaving for college. But I think being on his own for the first time triggered some setbacks and he's struggled a lot before making the decision to come home. He currently works part-time but spends pretty much every other waking moment in his room. We worked together with his dad ever since he first started showing signs of mental illness. Therapy, counseling, working with multiple doctors, multiple drug combinations, etc. For probably 18 to 24 months, pretty much all of our parental attention was focused on him and his issues because they were affecting everything and everyone in our family. When he was away at college, I finally felt like I could actually be a present and active father to my three other kids. I hate to put it this way, but I really felt like I was trying to make up for lost time. I also finally felt joy from parenting again, which hurts to say, but everything with my stepson was so stressful and progress was so slow. I finally felt like I was actually watching my kids grow up instead of missing out on everything. Now that my stepson is living at home with us again, I've tried really hard not to stray away from focusing my time and energy on my younger kids. I've tried to include my stepson in any outings or activities we're doing, but the few times he's decided to join us, it's been noticeably less enjoyable for everyone. I don't like saying it, but he can be a complete joy suck. He has a tendency to not allow anyone else to enjoy something if he isn't. So, I pretty much stopped inviting him along to things. Both he and my wife have noticed, and my wife called me out on it recently. She told me that he feels left out and wants to be included more. I reminded her of how he behaves when out with the family and told her that unless he changes his behavior, I'm not going to allow him to ruin things for our younger kids. She told me that he needs a strong father figure to help him through these hard times. And I reminded her that he has a father who can fill that role. But he doesn't want to live with him because his dad would require him to work full time and contribute to the household as an adult something my wife doesn't want to do. I told her that I am through letting him suck all of our time away from the younger kids, and I will continue to prioritize them over him. I told her that I would never ask him to leave, but that is legally an adult, and I have three young kids who require my time more than he does. Holy crap, way to bury the lead. He should be with his Bayou dad. It sounds like structure and purpose will do a million times more than indulging him. Listen to what your therapist says, obviously, but I can't imagine they would disagree. Not a -hole. Yeah, it seems like his dad and Opie are the only ones trying to do right by him. Opie's wife needs to let her kid become a functional adult, and the only way that happens is by doing what Bio Dad suggests, and find a stable job and contribute to the household. I'd imagine most therapists would also agree with that suggestion, unless there's a serious condition that wouldn't allow him to work. His dad would require him to work full-time and contribute to the household as an adult, something my wife doesn't want to do. This is a problem of your wife's making. She and her son need to find a solution and stop expecting the world to revolve around him. Lots of people struggle with mental health including me, and most of us find ways to cope and live our lives in a more or less productive manner. I have all sympathy and patience for people who try, and admiration and respect for those who try, fail and try again. I have none for those who refuse to try and those who enable them. Not a hole. Same here. I have depression, but I'm able to hold down a job and pay my bills like a functioning adult. I don't use it as an excuse to nope out of my responsibilities. Like you, I respect others who make an effort in their lives, even if they have setbacks, which I have had, and have none whatsoever for those who use their mental health as an excuse to not do something with their lives. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to host a birthday party because my nephew isn't allowed in my house? I, 24 female, live on a four-acre property that I bought for cheap for my grandma who moved to a retirement community. My nephew is turning 16 at the end of the month, and my sister asked if we could host his party here on the family property, meaning at my house. 
I told her no because my nephew is not allowed at my house. My nephew does not respect boundaries and treats everything like his plaything, including the boundaries of my older black Labrador Devos. He constantly chases him around and tries to pick him up despite me telling him to constantly leave him alone. Davos has arthritis and can't be chased around and hates loud noises, which my nephew is very loud. He doesn't have any behavioral disabilities or anything, he just doesn't care about other people's wishes. My sister blew up at me, telling me I was putting a dog before my nephew, and it was grandma's property that I can't dictate. I told her it was my property. I bought it and tended it and pay all the bills for it. My mom called me and asked if I could just put Davos in a room during the party and suck it up for just a day, but I said no. This is his house and he is allowed to go wherever he wants. And I won't shut him in a room. Now my family is divided, some of them calling me immature and selfish and others saying I'm right, while some, including my father, refuse to get involved. Am I the a-hole? And to add because I've gotten this question a couple times if the other members of the family were off for the house. My nan and I have always had a very close relationship and I've helped her attend the property for as long as I can remember. So, she offered to sell it to me when she grew too old to tend it herself. So no, other family members weren't given the opportunity to buy it, but they also weren't interested in it. It is very old and outdated, and my sister especially always talked about how much she hated the aesthetic of the house. The sole reason she wants to host it here is because my house has the most space. It's not a sentimental space for her. Your nephew and his mother are learning that actions have consequences. Best birthday gift you could give him, not they all. Yeah, Opie wouldn't have to choose between the nephew and the dog if the human being who is approaching adulthood is capable of understanding spoken language and would just leave the dog alone. And remember, it's not just the dog, that's just the most obvious problem because another living thing is involved. She clearly says the problem is bigger. Not a-hole. If the almost 16-year-old wasn't a terror, this would be a non-issue. Your sister says you're putting a dog over a person because she knows that on the surface, that would sound inappropriate or imbalanced. The real issue is that an elderly dog would not be a barrier to a party necessarily if you could trust her family members to all behave and be respectful. Kids much younger than 15 can typically manage basic rules around an older ailing pet and it's not your fault that he cannot. Oh, also the total ailery and entitlement of your sister, expecting to be able to use your property for this party. What a trip. She sounds like she's quite an a-hole on multiple levels, including in her dismissiveness of your ownership of the property and expectations that she has access to it as if it is somehow communal slash family space. And for those family members siding with sis and thrusting their unwanted opinions forth, I would tell them, why don't you host the party then? And hung up. Oh, you know they have their eye on the place for a cheap as free venue as well. If she says no to sister, then they might have to find and pay for some place to host their own weddings slash reunions slash etc. Not a all. The family isn't paying the taxes and upkeep. They aren't on a deed. They have zero rights to the property outside what Opie allows. Personally, I would be very reluctant to host gatherings at my own home in general. Not to mention the insurance slash civil complications should someone injure themselves during one of these shindigs. And don't forget about cleanup. Dollars to donuts, OP's family won't help clean up the property either. Last story. Am I the a-hole for calling my stepsister the ugly stepsister because she freaked out over a nickname? My female 29 family jokingly refers to me as princess slash the princess because I have a reputation for being opinionated and sensitive. This is mostly because of sensory issues, so certain noises or textures grate on me to an extent that I will leave the room or avoid touching things. I'm also just a picky person and I like things how I like them. So, my stepdad started referring to me as the princess, like don't open the car window, the princess will get upset. My stepbrothers and mom use it as well, and it's a running family joke. Well meant, and I've never been offended by it, in the 15 years it's been a thing. My stepsister Georgia, female 30, however, hates it. 
She used to snap whenever anyone said it, but over the years, she just started making the odd passive-aggressive comment about it. Everyone ignores it, because Georgia has a habit of thinking everything is about her. And if it's not about her, the reason it's not about her is because we all hate her, which then is still about her. So, our whole family is visiting my parents in the countryside for a couple of weeks. Georgia has brought her boyfriend Jason along. I've met Jason a couple of times before at dinners, and he is a nice guy, and he's fit and well. This morning, me and my mom were making breakfast and Jason came down and helped out. We normally have breakfast in the kitchen slash diner, so eventually everyone started gathering at the table. We always make the tea and coffee last, so is the hot when we eat. And we had all the mugs out and Jason offered to make the drinks. I told him not to do mine because I liked it made a very particular way. And he said, Okay, princess, I will just watch how you do it so I know for the next time. And we laughed. It was a joke. The next thing we know, Georgia shouts she's sick of everyone calling me that. She then swore at Jason for being just like them, us. She said, since everyone thinks I'm so special, what does that make her? And I replied, the ugly stepsister, obviously. No one said anything, but Georgia burst into tears, pushed her plate onto the floor, broke it, and went upstairs. And Jason ran after her. He since come down to apologize for her, and she hasn't come out of her room. My stepbrothers are on my side, but the parents say I should have just not said anything, and she would have calmed down, and that I went too far picking at an insecurity. That might be true, but I'm sick of her making everything about her. The joke doesn't have anything to do with her, and I am, as are my stepbrothers, sick of her acting out to force everyone to behave how she wants them to. Am I the a-hole for taking the argument there? What you said very likely reflects how she sees herself in this dynamic. You paint her as self-centered, but I'd bet that she has felt subordinate to you her whole life and is trying to claw back some of that attention for herself. As princess, your very particular needs and wants probably grate on the people around you to some extent. They have probably spent their lives catering to your picky personality, and under that friendly family joke lies a bit of real resentment. To be blunt, you are the center of attention, and you have become accustomed to it. The way to fix this is to apologize to your sister, try and have a dialogue with her about this, and try to be a bit less particular in your own wants when it puts an extra burden on those around you. Your comfort is not more important than those around you. You're the a-hole. I just have to wonder how Opie acts when she doesn't get her way, that everyone will tiptoe around her and bend to her will in order to avoid it. My best guess is she throws a temper tantrum. The irony.